Scuderia Ferrari's wind tunnel is back in action after a significant update was scheduled during the summer break. It now features a new moving floor capable of improving the aerodynamic map with a greater yaw angle of the model. Additionally, the adoption of more advanced software can provide more precise information in the search for correlation between the simulation world and the track. While McLaren and Aston Martin have completely rebuilt their wind tunnels and Red Bull is working on a new facility in Milton Keynes, also hosting racing bulls, the Italian side, with a still cutting-edge tool, has only revised the system designed by architect Renzo Piano. Jock Clear, head of Ferrari Engineering, explained during the Singapore Grand Prix weekend how the Marinello team overcame the difficulties that emerged in the summer with the development of the SF24 single-seater. It had been affected by the reappearance of bouncing with the aerodynamic update introduced in the Spanish Grand Prix at the Circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona. The Ferrari aerodynamics team led by Diego Tondi had found a slight increase in aerodynamic load, but the greater availability of downforce had led to the re-emergence of bouncing in the faster corners of the Barcelona circuit, causing the drivers to lose confidence due to the car's variable behavior from lap to lap. Ferrari was therefore forced to take a step back in the Austrian Grand Prix and the British Grand Prix, presenting a revised floor for the SF24 car at the Hungaroring circuit before the summer break, while waiting for a more definitive solution to arrive in Monza. Several teams, with the exception of McLaren, regressed in their developments, slowing down the evolution of their cars compared to the plans that had been laid out. Charles Leclerc won the Italian Grand Prix and finished second at the Baku City Circuit behind Oscar Piastri with the MCL 38 after securing pole position, while the outcome in Singapore was very negative due to repeated errors from both the teams and drivers in the qualifying session on Saturday, despite the fact that the SF24 car had shown potential to be perhaps the only challenger to McLaren and Lando Norris. In a small meeting with the media, Jock Clear explained that the Ferrari technicians had to halt developments in order to identify the anomaly in the correlation between wind tunnel data and track performance. Jock Clear explained that one was never completely sure about the updates they brought, but the feeling was that the most frequent question, even in other teams, was whether they had lost their way. The British engineer noted that certainly after Spain, they did not think they had lost their way, but it had emerged that there was some anomaly between what they saw in the tunnel and the data they read on the track, which meant they needed to understand what was happening. Ferrari has therefore revised its development process. Jock Clear stated that they discovered an anomaly, analyzed it, and tried to understand it to get back on track. He mentioned that this was what they had done, and as a result, they were back on the right path. The Ferrari head of engineering emphasized the need to keep their eyes wide open to avoid another possible anomaly, noting that sometimes developments do not work and that the growth process involves trying something new each week. He expressed confidence that their growth process was effective and believed they were at the top in every aspect, but acknowledged they would also wait for the next potential setback. Ground effect cars are very sensitive to ride height. The closer the floor is to the ground, the more aerodynamic load can be generated. However, the car on track is subjected to surfaces with roughness and bumps that modify its behavior, leading to sudden losses of downforce in various dynamic conditions. Jock Clear explained that small variations in height could cause sudden losses of load, making the car difficult to control due to its unpredictable reactions, which in turn diminishes the driver's confidence. He noted that in the tunnel, the floor is flat, but when the car goes over a curb, the bouncing that occurs is something that cannot be observed in the wind tunnel. He acknowledged that while they could make the car bounce on the mat, the data obtained was not consistent with what happens on the track. The British engineer concluded that it was impossible to achieve a 100% correlation and that full data fidelity does not exist. Additionally, the head of engineering at Ferrari mentioned that with ground effect, it is necessary to limit load losses as just 5 mm in height could result in either a total loss of downforce or the generation of maximum load. He stated that it is within this narrow range that the competition is contested. Putting aside the floor aspect, there has been much talk about flexi wings in the world of Formula One recently. While McLaren have been told to make changes to their rear wing after the Azerbaijan GP to remove what the media referred to as a mini DRS, after some investigation, the British team and Mercedes could keep their updates to their front wings. 
Ferrari have brought a front wing change themselves to the Singapore Grand Prix. The team's senior performance engineer, Jock Clear, shared some insights about the what makes this body part especially important in the current set of regulations in the Asian country. Jock Clear explained that the changes made to Ferrari's front wing ahead of the previous weekend weren't a traditional upgrade or something specifically tailored to the circuit. Instead, they involved shifting the energy slightly inboard. He mentioned that the inboard section had become more aggressive, while the outboard was less so, altering the dynamic. This allowed the team to increase performance slightly, particularly at the top end. The front wing became marginally more efficient, but more importantly, a bit more powerful, providing greater scope for adjustments. Jock Clear emphasized the significance of the front wing, noting that it always remains a crucial component as it is the leading edge of the car. He pointed out that drivers often complain about the difficulty of following other cars due to the impact on downforce, particularly for the rear wing. The rear wing constantly operates in the wake of the front wing, which disrupts its downforce. This makes the rear wing's role challenging, as it and the floor produce most of the car's downforce, yet they are always affected by the airflow from the front wing throughout the race. The British engineer highlighted that the front wing is critical in shaping the airflow for the rest of the car. Regarding the recent modifications, Clear stated that the new front wing configuration cleaned up the airflow, moving it around more effectively, which benefited the rear wing's performance downstream as well.